The original story contains content that is not safe for work and may not be suitable for all audiences. If you are an underage or overly sensitive individual, I suggest you to just click off the video. Enjoy at your own risk. The Forbidden of the Robot I am but an average forum board user, but not until 11 years ago when the sites became part of a large group investigating a, what I should call, a strange incident that happened in Russia. Here is my story of what I gathered about the incident. On October 17, 1997, six teenagers were arrested for driving erratically near a school district in a carpool. They were reported to be in pain, most of them complaining of hallucinations and headaches. Police suspected them of taking drugs, but upon further investigation of a drug tester, the report concluded that it was not drugs. The six teenagers were sent to a local hospital for evaluation of their diseases. All six patients refused to give their names, and so were given numbers instead. One and four were females, the rest were all male patients. After a hospital stay of ten days, the doctors were puzzled at what the patients were suffering from. They reported incoherent talking, screaming, and a strange rash on their chests. A short background investigation followed, and the only unusual thing it reported was that two months ago, the group of six were friends who took a hike in the mountainous wilderness. They had then caught some kind of spore during their trip, and suffered anthrax-like symptoms once they returned. Fortunately after treatment, these symptoms disappeared. It was decided to send the patients to the Fuch Research and Hospital Center, located just a few miles from the hospital, as many doctors suspected this might be a new disease. Afterwards, what happened was apparently classified by the government and cast by which many claim was a cover story. What the government claimed was that, over a period of two weeks of testing, all the patients were declared to have an ammonia-like disease, likely caused by secondary infections from the spores they picked up at their previous mountain hike. But it was too late for treatment, and so all six patients died. Their bodies were cremated, and sent to family members in urns. But there was a few suspicious sides of this story that lead many to believe the government was trying to hide something from the public. First off, many of the teenagers' families had issued a statement, wishing for the teenagers' bodies to be delivered to them for formal burial. None of the families requested for their bodies to be cremated. And an even more strange part, was that the research laboratory where the patients resided abruptly closed down, according to rumors at just about the exact time the teenage patients were declared dead. Armed guards stood outside the building, wearing SWAT-style body armor, and holding assault rifles. A few wanderers reported the doors of the building to be bolted shut completely, and all windows of the building covered with black material, likely curtains. All these facts eventually led to a general group on the internet forum I was in, to start an investigation on, if there was a secret side to the story. I was curious about everything, and I joined. I became one of the biggest informers of the group. Many anonymous users have sent me detailed logs, information and reports that they have claimed to have recovered about the food patients, but none of them really pointed to any real nor new information. Years passed. The forum eventually started to lose its popularity, and the group shrank. I myself was thinking of resigning from the site, when one user, under the name of Maliac113, sent me a private message. He claimed he was trying to retrieve the video memory of the security cameras at Fook, which had backup videos stored online at the research center's site. I kept in touch via PMs with this guy. Eventually I gave him my email, and every day he began to email me with what he had gotten with the site. For the first few weeks, he got nothing out of the hacking. Then, almost a month later, he sent me a large byte video on an online private video host, and told me to try to scheme through it. I opened up my video editing software, and took a look at the video. It was kind of boring, to be honest of what I was expecting to see. The room was completely white, and got an eerily sterile feeling to it. The patients were all lying in square white beds with white bed sheets. I put the video on super sped up. Nothing really interesting happened. The patients will once in a while turn around in bed, cough, maybe sit up. Doctors and nurses will come in once in a while to check up on them, and provide food and drink and attention. 
Overall the video didn't seem to be any much too strange or different. On the second day, the videos were the same. And the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Soon my friend didn't even bother making a description anymore, it was just a no-subject title. However, one Friday night, I noticed something strange about the patients in the seventh day of the tape. I played the video on super sped up as always. The patients seemed to be in the same condition they had been for the week. But there was something different this time, when the timestamp of the video read to about 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't know how to accurately describe this but, but the patient's bodies, they were slowly, very slowly, but noticeably starting to swell, mostly in the stomach and chest areas. It was late at night. I didn't dare to watch the rest of the video, because it's really creeping me out, and I'm not a fan of nightmares. But now I was very curious to know the rest of the story to this mystery. The next day, my friend's email arrived at 7 o'clock in the morning. This time, he included a voice message with it. Apparently he watched the video as well. His voice was very shaky, and I can just read the fear in his voice as he spoke. Did, did you notice something about those food patients in the last video I sent you? I just happened to watch it, and what I saw, the patients were, just like, literally, bloating up. And, and the way they moaned. It, just, Ugh, freaked me out so badly. Now we know we are looking at a mystery. And the way I see it, a really disturbing one too. I'm not daring to look at this one, please, if you can, watch it and tell me. My hands were shaking as I clicked the host link, and the new tab opened up. You know that cold, clammy feeling where the back of your neck is all prickly, sort of like when you are waiting for the picture of a gruesome murder scene to load? I'm having exactly that sort of feeling right now. The circling buffering button seemed to take forever to load. Finally, the triangle play button appeared, and, holding my breath, I loaded it into my video editor and played it. Things didn't seem to get any better for the patients. Their skins were a sickening reddish color today, as if they had been in a tanning bed for six hours straight. The bloating also didn't seem to quell. Over the next five hour period sped up into five minutes, I watched in disbelief as the patient's chest areas started to rise. They were soon so puffed, a bit of their stomach showed through the top of their shirts. It was clearly visible even at an overhead view. I didn't want to see any more of the video. I just didn't. I clicked out of the host site and hammered out a quick reply to my friend, claiming that I didn't notice any swelling and that he probably just saw it run. I didn't like to lie like that, but at the same time, I don't want to freak him out with how the patients look like at this point. Next day morning seemed to take forever to rise. Partly because I was hunched over my laptop starting from 5 in the morning, running the facts of what I saw of the videos to the forum board group. Many people didn't believe me. I can't blame them. Then, at 11.30 straight, a beep sounded on my email alerter, and a new message pop pop appeared. From, Maliac113. No subject. He didn't include a message this time, probably since he's just too scared to view the video and pre-inform me of anything. I dragged the video onto my editor as usual. After it loaded and buffered, I hit the play button, forgetting to speed it up. The timestamp of the video read 6.21 AM. The screen was pitch black for a couple of seconds. Then there was a white flash and the video slowly dimmed in. What I saw, made me scream. And scream. And scream again. Every one of the patients. Every single one of them. Was lying, in a pool of blood. Dead. These patients are dead. That was the first thing that came to my mind. But then, a sudden movement at the bottom of the screen caught my eye. It was one of the patients. He, or she, was still alive. I'm not sure of their gender, they were too disfigured by the bloating, and the dark from early morning to be made out. I dragged the video flipper forward about 5 hours to around noon on the timestamp. The scene was too gruesome to describe. The white sheets of the patient's bed were all stained with blood, and a strange brownish red fluid. And, judging from the scrunched up faces of the few doctors and nurses that entered the room throughout the day, it must have smelled pretty bad too. I'm sorry to say this guys, but all of this footage was too disturbing for me to bear. 
I skipped four days of the video, only viewing the last one at the end of the two-week period of the patient's stay. What I saw on the final day of the security camera footage will haunt me for the rest of my life. The tape started up at about one in the afternoon. The patients were now horribly bloated, deformed, yellowish fluids seeping from gaping, open sores in every visible part of their skins. But it was not just the patients. At around 3 in the afternoon, a figure walked into the room, wearing a starched white coat. It took me a while to register that the man had to be a doctor, or a scientist. It took me even longer to recognize the long, black object he was holding in his hands. It was, an assault rifle. The guy pulls back some sort of mechanism on the gun, then, in a split second, had the gun raised and aimed. 30 bullets flew through the air in less than 4 seconds, full auto. I'd never heard a gun sound so loud. Movies had exaggerated it way too much. The patients didn't cry out or react at all to the bullets. They just suddenly shuddered as the bullets slammed into them, driving them backwards. Then they lay still. Two days later, I finally realized what was wrong. Why the teenagers were cremated. Why they were so horribly deformed in the videos. And why that doctor stormed into the room with a gun and shot all the patients. Two days of research have finally brought up the disturbing answer. The patients have been already dead when they arrived at FUC. They were dead for the whole two-week period, possibly dead at the hospital. Yet they were still moving and talking. And the most disturbing part of all? Their bloating was from the first stages of decomposition. It was a two-week footage of watching six rotting corpses, 